say you have a five gallon tank and you only want to get one fish. Are there other options than the obvious one that you're probably all thinking of? Yes, yes there are. There are actually five options of a single fish that will do just great in a five gallon tank. Welcome to the small scape. I am excited to answer this question. I actually get this question a lot, especially in the world of nano tanks. The five gallon tank is a very common and very popular size. I have numerous ones of them. They're a nice size to tuck in anywhere on pretty much any dresser or uh, counter. Really great in the kitchen, bathroom, on your desk, really anywhere. But are there any fish that you can put just one? Say you want to spoil one little fish. So all of these fish do have similarities, one of which is they will all need a heater. So if you do get a kit tank that includes a heater or you have to get one separate, they will all require one. Uh, also, they do not need to be in a group. A lot of fish, even nano fish, need to be in a group to be content and happy. But these do not need to be in a group. And then also, they're also very beautiful. And they can, they can pull off a five gallon tank and look just stunning and have a little personality of their very own. And you won't be sorry that you only have a single fish in that five gallon tank. So without further ado, let's start with the number one choice, which is probably the most obvious choice, the betta. The betta fish is amazing. How many ways should I count that I love the betta fish? Uh, how much time do you have? Everybody loves bettas, uh, uh, most people do because they come in different colors, different fin styles. They're just, they're so unique. Each one of them is very special. Um, if you're looking for any beautiful, extra beautiful bettas, I would highly recommend KG Tropical's website and that's keepfishkeeping.com. I'll just warn you, if you look on that website, I'm sure you will fa fall in love with a number of them and they're all quite stunning. Lisa takes care of many, many bettas and she does a great job. She is a great fish mom. But the betta has so much personality. I currently have one as a coworker. It is sitting right next to my desk. Her, her name is Peanut. She's so cute. She's still a baby. She is doing just great for all of you who have been asking. But I have had numerous kinds of boys and girls and all different fin styles. It's just, they're just beautiful fish and really fun to keep. They have great little personalities. I uh, highly recommend you have a lid because sometimes they will jump, but they're very personable and you really, you just won't be sorry if you get yourself a betta for your five gallon tank. Now I am, I forgot to mention, I am working these, uh, these five just by size. I'm starting with the largest fish down to the tiniest fish. So number two, I would have to say is a less, less common choice, and you may not have thought of this, but the peacock gudgeon. It's a beautiful little fish that has very, has a whole lot of personality and looks and a lot of color in a very small little body. Now like the betta, the betta usually ranges, it'll probably stay under about three inches and the peacock gudgeon would be about the same size. So it is uh, a slightly larger than some of my other picks coming up, but it is a beautiful little fish and it has a very unique, what I find a very unique little body style. It has kind of like a little rounded head and even um, the males, in as small of a fish that little guy is, they can even develop a little nuchal hump, which is actually kind of cute. In a larger fish, I'm not really fond of that look, but in a little tiny peacock gudgeon, it's kind of cute. And a lot of different colors in this fish. So uh, like kind of like a silver white kind of color, but you'll also see some blues, some reds, some yellows. It's just a beautiful, beautiful little fish. And all of these fish too, uh, especially this one, will prefer and really, really like to have a lot of plants in the tank. So a lot of cover. So if they are a little bit on the shy side, they have lots of space. They All of these fish will prefer some driftwood, rocks, and a lot of plant covers so that they can go and get some private time and just feel a lot more safe, even in a small tank like a five gallon. Number three is one of my all-time favorites. I don't have any right now, but I did have two, and they're so cute. It's the pea puffer. Now in a five gallon tank, you can keep one pea puffer. That's generally the recommended size when you're, when you're talking about a pea puffer. Generally, people will suggest that you keep one pea puffer per 
five gallons of water and I would kind of go with that. If you just have one, he or she will do just fine all on its own. And just like the other ones that I'm mentioning, they'll, they'll really uh, appreciate a lot of cover. So give them a lot of plants and little nooks and crannies to not only investigate, but also to take cover from um, just uh, too much publicity out, outside the tank. The pea puffer really only ranges from like an inch to an inch and a half. Now mine stayed under an inch. They were on the smaller side, but the biggest draw to these little guys would be their eyeballs. Their little eyes are so cute. They kind of pivot on their own. They work independently of each other and they have, they just always look like they're looking and searching and they're, they're just so, so, so cute. And the only thing that you may want to keep in mind with these guys is what you're going to feed them. Now mine, when I had them, the only thing that they would really eat, except one, one of them would eat baby brine shrimp, uh, the other one would only eat snails. So if you have a pest snail problem, then these guys are your, your go-to. They will take care of them in no time, uh, but they will make kind of a mess. As, as you would guess, if they're eating snails, they're going to cause a little bit more of a mess, but they do like bloodworms, um, lots of different uh, live food choices like that. Number four, another one of my favorite fish, although for nano tanks, I also, I also love nano fish. So the, the smaller the fish, the more I'm probably going to like it. So this one is a tiny, tiny little fish. It's under an inch and that would be the sparkling grammy. Love sparkling grammys. You also hear them called croaking grammys because they make a sound that you can even hear outside of the tank. I myself have never heard any of mine croak, so it's kind of a cool thing. But they are—they're a beautiful little fish. They're—they've uh, uh, got a lot of silver, kind of bluish, brownish colors to them, but they can be a little bit shy. So giving them lots of space to. Uh, and plants and rocks and, and whatnot in your tank will will definitely be appreciated by these guys but they are a beautiful little fish and especially if you love grommies which I do I love dwarf grommies and all really all grommies except for the giant grommy but really really uh, adorable little fish with a lot of color and uh, a decent amount of personality for my last pick this is the tiniest one on my list and another one of my favorites. I know I say that a lot, but they're all my favorites. I love them. Is the Scarlet Baddis, Dario, Dario. These are tiny and they look, they have so much detail to them. They are just, so if you think of other tiny, tiny fish, maybe like the Mira Rasbora, uh, the Chili Rasbora, they don't, they're not super, what I would call super detailed. They're just real skinny and, but this one, the Scarlet Baddis is like a little shrunken big fish and they max out at either, uh, I think the females half an inch. The males will even stay under an inch, but they're just adorable. They're so tiny. They're so cute. They have a pretty red color. There are different kinds of Baddis. I do have another one, uh, Baddis Essimensis, who is much larger different breed, way tougher. He's a stinker. But the Scarlet Baddis stays super tiny and really still a lot of color, a lot of personality. And they also like uh, live food. So baby brine shrimp, uh, that's the, that's what ours ate. Um, maybe bloodworms, probably they would do pretty well with. Um, they won't eat a lot of flake food, uh, anything like that, but they, they do prefer the uh, baby brine shrimp for sure. But those are five fish that you can consider if you have a five gallon and you only want to get one little friend. If you had any of these fish, let me know which one was your favorite. Have you ever kept any of these all by themselves? Obviously with the betta, you didn't keep with other bettas, but let me know. Did you keep them just in a tank by themselves? How did they do? Or would you try it? Or do, do you just consider a lot of fish? Do you want them to have friends and do you like to keep them in a community setting? Let me know that. And uh, thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.